Your calculator is a great way to actually graph lots of complicated looking functions. So I'm going to show you uh, using a graphic calculator emulator that I have. Uh, this one uh, shows what the TI-84 looks like, but you may very well have a TI-83. Now if you have a TI-84, for example, um, it really helps to get the new software. So there's actually a new version that you can get. Uh, so I want to show you, for example, uh, some uh, advantages of using that one. So for starters, let's take a look at this equation here. I want to graph this function. f of x equals x to the fourth minus x squared, all that divided by 2x plus 1. So what I'm going to do then is open up my calculator, and I'm going to try to graph that exact thing. So maybe I'll leave myself a little bit of room here so I can see what I'm doing. Now instead of f of x, remember, we just have to graph y equals all this stuff. Now this might be complicated to do um, as far as getting your calculator to understand what you want it to do because if you look here uh, this over here where I'm pointing uh, this is all on the uh, top so to speak and this is all on the bottom so the uh, numerator or denominator and your calculator uh, needs to be told very explicitly what's so to speak on the top or the bottom so when I was using my TI-83 and also the TI-84 like this uh, before the new software I used to have to use lots of brackets and uh, parentheses everywhere. But now it's really cool. Check this out. I can press alpha and this y equals because you see these are color coded. I want the little green F1. So if I press alpha, whoops, I guess I'll uh, have to do this again here. So if I want to press alpha and then F1 like this right here. Now I've got a choice. I can choose fractions or functions or matrix or y variables, and those are actually chosen just by these F keys. So this is F4, F3, 2, and 1. Take a look at this first one here, numerator over denominator. I'm going to choose that one. Look, now it looks really nice. Now I can tell my calculator exactly what I want. So I'm going to say x to the power of 4. And look what it does. It even makes it look really nice except now I want something that's no longer to that power, so I have to press the right arrow just to get back down, so to speak. Now I want minus x to the power of 2. However, I can also just press this symbol right here, this squared, if I feel like it. That's just because it's used so often. Now I want to get to the new uh, denominator, so I just press the down arrow, and then I say 2x plus 1. So this should work. Uh, so all I have to do then is just press graph and let's see what it looks like. This graph looks quite ugly. And so this is actually a chance to show you a little bit about what uh, we can do with these graphs. Now, what you can always do is change your window. So if you look at this right here, this tells me that my X values go from negative 10 to 10 and my Y values go from negative 10 to 10. So let's see that. That means each little tick mark right here is one unit. So it goes from negative 10 to plus 10 in the x, goes from negative 10 to plus 10 in the y's. Now of course you could sit there and play around with your window and change it to make it look more interesting, but I often like to use this zoom button right here. So normally in order to get everything to be in a window from minus 10 to 10, minus 10 to 10, you can just press zoom standard. So you see this one here, number 6? So I always just think of zoom, then I press the 6. What that does, that gets me from minus 10 to 10, minus 10 to 10, so to speak. Now let's take a look, though, at something a little bit better. What I can do is, if I scroll down, I can see there's a really good one. Uh, the ones I use, by the way, the most often are zoom standard. Whoops. I use zoom standard and zoom trig and zoom fit. I think I went too far here. Here we go. So the ones I use the most often are zoom trig, zoom standard, and I like zoom fit. And if I'm doing statistics, I use zoom stat. Let's do fit, because I don't know how many times you've looked at your calculator, but sometimes you know, when you're doing a graph, the uh, graph just goes right off the screen. You can't even find it. So this essentially is a, is a nice way to help uh, to find things right here. So that's zoom fit. So I like that one. That's zoom zero. That helps to show you some of the things going on in your graph here. Okay, um, now what we can also do is try doing different types of zooms, right? I can go back to zoom standard, just to take a look at this again. Now what I can do if I want, uh, what if I want a box that's uh, maybe a different size? So I can actually zoom in, 
Um, and I can zoom in based on the center. So if you look, I can move my cursor around. See this little flashing dot here? So what I can do is uh, just zoom in a little bit based on where I was. So this right here at least shows me a little bit better uh, what this whole graph looks like. So I think what I'm going to do actually is capture this screen. I think I've got a little screen capture thing. Let's see if it works. So if I do this, this should put it on the next... Yeah, there we go. So this is actually what the graph looks like. I'm actually going to take uh, this one right here and I'm going to uh, paste it over here. I think it's maybe a little bit more useful here. So I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste it. Just to show, well, this is, this is a sketch of this graph. But maybe we want to see a little bit more. Maybe we're curious about some other things. So rather than show you how to do the formal full graph of this, this is going to be coming up in different steps. My goal right now is just to show you a few little tips and tricks with your calculator here. So one of the things I like to use, uh, so there was not only window, but there was zoom. But there's also things like, uh, well, what if you want to know what each of these values is? In other words, what's this uh, point right here? What's its x and y values? Now, some people like to use trace. So what it does, as I move along to the right, can you see the coordinates right here, the x and the y coordinates changing? You can use that in order to find a value. And sometimes, for example, you're, you're curious about, okay, well, what is... Um, What's the value at x equals 1.5? Let's just say you're curious about that. Well, you could use the trace to go and get sort of close to 1.5. If you look, I'm well, this is 1.489-ish, and this is 1.54-ish. So that means if I want to know the y value, well, it's somewhere between uh, 0.679 and 0.804, I guess. That's not very good. So what I would prefer to do instead, in order to be more accurate, do you see this little blue calc right there? What I can do then is press that. So this is color coded, so I'm going to press the second button first, so second, and then I press this button here, and that gets me to calculate all sorts of awesome stuff. If you've never used this before, this should be your best friend. So in this case, what if I want the value? So that means I want the value, and all I have to do is tell it what x value I want. So in this case, Let's say I say x is 1.5. All I have to do is press enter and it'll tell me the exact y value that uh, corresponds to this x value of 1.5. And the good news is if I want another x value, I don't have to sit there and go to calc again. I can just press 2. It automatically knows it's x equals 2 and I can see that maybe. Or maybe I say negative uh, 1 and it's going to tell me this little piece of the graph right here. Now what if I say uh, negative 0.5? Let's take a look at that. Do you notice here I get y equals with a blank? That's because this graph is a special kind. It actually has asymptotes, which we're going to be talking about later. What that means, though, is that if I want to draw this right here, uh, maybe I'll put a different color here. What this means is that there is um, a dotted line kind of hanging out here, which means that the x value is not allowed to be whatever this is because my function is undefined at x equals negative 0.5. Now for those who are really good, you might take a look at this equation and you can actually see that because you're not allowed to divide by 0 in something. I mean, it doesn't matter what x value you put in, but if ever the denominator is 0, anything divided by 0 is error because it's, I mean, it's, it can't be done. You can't find out how many times 0 fits into something. Some people like to say it's uh, infinity, but uh, I just prefer to say it's undefined. It's, it's, you know, it gives you an error here. And if you look, put in a negative 0 0.5 here, negative 0 0.5 times 2, that'll actually give you negative 1. A negative 1 plus 1 makes this whole bottom uh, 0, which means this function kind of explodes, so to speak. So there's lots and lots of cool things we can do with this uh, calculator. We can find out the zeros and the minimums and maximums and intersections. We can even find the derivative and the integral. So I'm going to be showing you in uh, later on videos uh, or further videos, I'm going to be showing you how to use most of these functions here. But for right now, it suffices to say that we can do just about any graphs we want just by using our super duper awesome graphing calculator to help us out.